In this video, I'm gonna teach you five tips that you can use to avoid cooking separate meals for your kids and yourself. Hey there, it's Hunter here from Hybrid Fitness, and today I'm gonna to give you five tips that are gonna help you not be a short order cook. I know a big issue for a lot of you moms out there is you've got kids who are a little bit picky with their foods, and you end up uh, cooking like three different meals for them. So um, one, you can have a healthy meal and two, they can like actually eat their dinners. And um, obviously that's not an ideal situation. The ideal situation would be cook one healthy meal for everybody. Uh, and I know sometimes the alternative is you just end up cooking that one meal and eating what they eat. Um, and sometimes it's not healthy. So again, we're going to dive into five tips today that I think will help big time with you. And the first tip is that you really wanna do your best to start them out eating healthy foods early. The earlier that they're learning these good habits, the less weird it will be that you're trying to give them you know, vegetables and fruits and, and things like that. So the earlier you can get them started, the better. All right, and tip number two is introducing new foods slowly. So Melissa actually works with kids on a daily basis who some of them do have issues uh, eating new foods and they've, they've gotta to go to sometimes drastic measures to do that. Um, but one thing I've kind of learned from talking with her is that you, if, as long as you introduce them slowly, um, it, it, kids are kind of like adults, right? We're resistant to change and so are they. But if you can frame it in a good way, then they'll be much more apt to adopt these, these newer foods. And one uh, way you can do that is say, hey, well, this type of food is for your muscles and this type of food, uh, this character, Puppy Pals, uses to solve mysteries. So if you can kind of create like cool little reasons for each food, not just the healthy foods, right? If you do it for every type of food so they know you're not up to something. Um, so yeah, like chicken is for your muscles and fruits are for your shiny teeth and this. And so if they kind of get to the habit of learning that, it can also kind of create that, uh, you know how when you say, what's the, what's the cow say? Moo. Moo. So you should be able to almost go to your kids and say, hey, what's the chicken for? And they're like, for my muscles. And so, so, but really, if you just keep repeating that constantly, that will drill that into their brain and they'll remember that when they're like our age. So um, use that and that, that should help you a lot. Now, tip number three is stay persistent in introducing these new foods. Science shows that it can take up to five to 10 introductions or, or exposures to these new foods before kids actually kind of accept them as like normal. Um, and Melissa was saying like, uh, well, you can go ahead and tell them. Um, it can take, like Hunter said, up to five to 10 times, even tasting it for a child to decide whether or not they like the food. Yeah, so I think like a lot of the times parents will say, well, I just don't give it to them because they don't like it. But in that case, you're not staying persistent and you're not exposing it. And look, you don't have to like expose it to them every single day, but if you can just do it once or twice a week and, and not be too pushy about it, um, then over time you should see, you should be more successful in, in introducing those new foods. Tip number four is make sure there are healthy snacks available. Now there is a law in nutrition that says if it is in your cupboard and it is in your house or if it is in your car, it will be eaten. And that's true. So what I recommend is make healthy snacks available as often as possible and really try and reduce those unhealthy snacks. Because let's be honest, we've got the healthy snacks in the cupboard and right beside it are the unhealthy snacks. Which one are you going for, right? Yeah, me too. So, so try and make it exclusively healthy snacks and make them available um, so that they can actually access it themselves. Allow them to be self-sufficient and, and make those decisions um, versus just trying to, to do it for them. Because again, the more we kind of do an intervene one, we're kind of babying them. Um, and two, by doing it, we're allowing them and empowering them to do the things, uh, to make better decisions as they grow and get older. Um, do you have anything to add? Yeah, and I actually read somewhere about putting the healthy options that you want to eat at eye level when you open up a pantry or open up a refrigerator so it's like the first thing you see. Because if you put all your healthy things up on the top shelf of your pantry, you're not looking there. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep like the crackers and stuff more at the top and the healthier options right in the middle and even the fridge. Like I'm not going to go dish through the bottom of something to get 
you yeah. know, the healthy choices. Oh, right there, I'm gonna take that yogurt, so. So make it the first thing you see in your cupboards in your fridge. And then finally, remember that when you're traveling, also have things available. Have like those little sandwich bags ready to go with fruit sliced up. So that way you have those healthy snacks on the go versus stopping really quick at a gas station or a convenience store and getting whatever's in there. Cause we know when you walk in and you see, you'll see, you'll see the healthy stuff, but right beside it, you'll see the salty, crunchy stuff and they're gonna see it too. And they're gonna be like, mommy, that's what I want. So uh, yeah, so be prepared in the car as well. And tip number five is don't force things. And so when, when your kids are eating different foods, try not to over comment on it, right? You've done your job in providing them the healthy foods, assuming you have. Um, so kind of let them make the choices to eat it. If you just are always forcing it down, saying eat this, eat this, right? You're not gonna want to. Again, if, if I made you eat vegetables and I kept telling you to do it over and over, wouldn't you get annoyed a little bit? Just a little bit and you'd probably wanna go and eat something else. So just keep that in mind. Um, anything to add? And I think it's okay for um, to accept when a child doesn't like something. So if a child doesn't like cooked carrots, you've had them eat them an X number of times. You know, okay, so Joey doesn't like cooked carrots. That's that's okay. Try to find something that he does like or they do like, and they will eat, so they feel successful with it. Definitely. And again, that's kind of where that stay persistent. Thing comes into handy because maybe they don't like it the first time. Hey, I didn't like sushi the first time, but now I love it. So just kind of keep putting it there. Again, don't force it down, but hey, they might try another bit and realize one day that they like it. Um, another really good thing, cool thing that you mentioned was maybe start mixing it into like more recipes versus just like this is plain carrots, this is plain chicken, whatever the food is, mix it in there in ways that um, it doesn't look like the thing and they might find that they develop a, a taste bud for it, so. So there you have it. Those are the five plus the bonus six tip there at the end um, that you can use to not be a short order cook so that you can eat a healthy meal with your family. Again, it's not a quick fix. It's something that takes time to develop and build, but if you can apply it, uh, I'm sure you'll see differences in your health and long lasting changes in your kid's health as well. So hey, if this video was helpful to you, please hit the like button below. If of course you have any questions or suggestions for other videos, please leave it in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're creating awesome content for you every single week. So I wanna keep doing it for you, but I wanna know that you're listening. So, and finally, if you're a mom out there who you just need a little bit more social support, you need a little extra push, or you just wanna be around other moms just like you, and, and know that you're not alone, because I'm promising you, you're not, click the link in the description. It will request that you join our Facebook, our mom Facebook group with over 1,500 moms, and I will just approve it as soon as I see it. So, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.